What is interior design? Interior design is all about how we experience our spaces. It is a powerful, essential part of our daily lives, and it affects how we live, work, play, and even heal. Comfortable homes, functional workspaces, and beautiful public spaces. That is interior design at work. Wednesday. I hope you guys are well. Thank you so much for joining me for another video. Today I have a haul for you guys. I want to show you guys everything that I've purchased so far for the library. I'm so excited to get this all pulled together and my design that I created come to life. The first part was the actual build and that is just about done and I cannot wait to reveal that to you guys. To have something that I designed come to life is amazing to me to see that happen. The second part of the design is the feel that I want the room to have. Now that room is going to be functional for a couple of things. It's going to be the office where I do all my editing, all my bill paying, all of those things will be happening in there. But it's also going to be a comfortable place where I can sit and do puzzle, I can read a book, I can do my Bible study, I can do all of those things. Now I initially had said that I was going to put the two sofas in there, but I've since changed my mind. And the reason I changed my mind was because I found a beautiful vintage tea cart that I had to have. Actually, Mr. Ernie, with his great eye, is the one who spotted it when we were leaving a consignment shop. It's in mint condition and it's beautiful. So I'm going to be showing you guys that. The second part of that is all of the accessories. And I wanted a mix of old and new with that. If I would have waited to find everything old, it would have taken forever and I still will be collecting. You know, I want that room to be a collection of things. But to jumpstart the decor, I needed to pick up some new things. And I was really careful at items that I selected. So I'm gonna give you guys a haul. I'm gonna show you everything. And we're gonna start from the ground and work our way up. And I'm gonna give you an idea of the furniture placement and then we'll get into the accessories. Let's get started. The first thing that we are going to start with is this beautiful rug that we found for $149. And this is what it looks like. I couldn't believe it when we found it. This is the underside. This is the side that the furniture will be placed on. Because of the texture and the color, we just couldn't believe it. We are so stoked <laughs> about this rug and I cannot wait to get it in the space. It's beautiful. We got that at Home Goods for $149. I was going back and forth with what style of rug that I wanted to have in there. I wanted it to have a very casual fill in there. I don't want it to be formal. Um, I want it to be super casual and relaxed and full of texture. When we spotted this in Home Goods, we knew that it was a done deal. Texture, 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 starting from the floor, working our way up. But it also is neutral at the same time. A static over this rug. <laughs> it is just perfect. There's no waiting. If you spot something and your heart fills it and you fill it in your blood and your bones, get it. Surround yourself with things that you love and it's going to be beautiful. Now that we got the rug, let's talk about furniture. I'm definitely going to be using one of the cream sofas for sure, but we found something, like I said, that I had to have. Because in order to, and I've talked about this before, when you mix vintage with new, it instantly creates home. It inst instantly creates a homey feel when you combine the two. So Ernie's not a huge fan of all vintage. Neither am I really. He does like little touches of it, as do I, and he lives in this house. So we have to kind of work on design together. Anyways, when we were walking out of the consignment store, he spotted this and I couldn't believe it. We went over there and I was all done. Here she is, this beautiful tea cart, vintage. It's got this bamboo detail at the bottom. The legs work perfectly. This is all my construction dust. <laughs> Look at this detail, you guys. It has two sides that can come up so that's functioning. Look at the woodwork in perfect condition. I mean, 
it's beautiful. It also has this pull out serving tray. What I love about this too, is if I'm working on a small puzzle, I can do it on here. And when I'm done with it, I can always slide it back inside. It's also got a drawer right here. Look at this beautiful handle. Look at that. Is that not gorgeous? Oh, beautiful. And it is a stamped Heckman. This is what it looks like with both leaves out. Is that not gorgeous? I love it. Okay. That was such a score, right? But with that said, putting the sofa next to that is not gonna work. So we needed to come up with another plan. Well, I've been looking and looking and looking for chairs. They're expensive. I already have a chair. It's a chair that I love to sit in and do my Bible study because it's so comfy. It's right here. So I'm going to start off by putting this in there. It matches the sofa and it'll fit perfectly next to this beautiful cart that we just picked up. So that is what I'm gonna do. Because I told you I am going to be redoing my room. I decided on keeping the furniture. By the way, thank you to everybody that said, yes, keep it. <laughs> I am, anyways, in love with that so far. I think it's gonna be beautiful. It's gonna be absolutely beautiful. Next thing we thought about was lighting. Now I already showed you guys the sconces that we picked up for the wall and we did just order library lights. However, they're not in yet. They're due to come in sometime between now and next Monday and hopefully they'll come in sooner rather than later. You guys will just have to wait to see those when they come in, but they're beautiful 18 inch with rib shade on them. Um, and they're just, they're beautiful. So excited about that. So that was the lighting. But then we also like to have a lamp on our table. A lamp just brings in, you know, an added element of lighting, more warm. And we were in Home Goods. <laughs> this is probably a lamp that 99% of people just walk past and don't give it a second thought. Here she is. There are a couple of elements that I love about this lamp. Not only the artichoke base, which provides such interest, but also the shape of this lampshade. I love this. And this, I mean, detail. We got this lamp for $69.99. You can search it on Google. Um, artichoke lamp this exact one is a lot more expensive if you were to buy it at a furniture store but i just fell in love with this so much fun i mean the more texture and different elements that i can get into a design the better off i am because i'm a texture 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 person i love texture now we're going to talk pillows we all know that my curtains are white with blue peacocks and has some green in there and all the beauty. The main color that you'll see in those curtains is the blue, mainly because I've added the blue to the cabinetry, but blue and green go together. My office chair is a beautiful green, so I need to incorporate some of that green elsewhere in the design so that everything just kind of meshes and comes together. Leopard is a beautiful print to use with those deep blues and greens. And so I picked up pillows, which I showed you guys, but I'm gonna show you anyways. I'm gonna put them all on this chair behind me and I'm gonna show you what it's gonna kind of look like. <laughs> But I also wanna show you my desk chair because the desk chair is definitely going to be in the room and you're gonna be able to see it. It's gonna be pretty prominent. So let's walk over there. I'll show you what I'm talking about and then we'll play with the pillows on the chair so you guys can get an idea of what that's gonna look like. So here's my desk chair. I love this desk chair. It's got the antique brass base and this beautiful green. It's just gorgeous. So remember when I was talking about this pillow, I said we are going to incorporate this green over into the sofas because it just fits perfectly, doesn't it? I love it. Here is my pillow selection for the sofas. This one I just picked up. I love it. I wanted something different. I was looking for two, but one will do. It's going to be beautiful. Um, probably put this one on the chair because it picks up that peacock green. I love the mixture of the textures and the colors. It just all works. So beautiful, I can't wait to do this. It's gonna be gorgeous, you guys. Accessorizing 
is the fun part of decor. Um, I have certainly over the years made mistakes um, and had to have changed things. But when I started following my gut and buying things that I love, as long as it was within the family of color and fit in the room, that's when my designs started coming together and I started just really loving my spaces. And that's what it's all about. Just like I talked about at the beginning of the video. It really, you ha your rooms are really designed to live in and you have to really love that space, you know? Anyways, I got some accessories for the, for the shelving. So I'm gonna show you guys all of that. The first thing we're gonna talk about is books. Now, when I was in California before, when I sold my forever home, I had a ton of books because I had a whole wall bookshelf in my front room, but I got rid of all of them. Um, because I didn't know what my next house was gonna look like. I didn't wanna store them. People who love books and love to read and are attached to books and look at them as a living, breathing thing probably are gonna disagree with that, but that's where I was in life and at that moment. And when I get into those moments of decluttering and getting rid of things, I nothing is safe. So I got rid of everything. I have no books. Um, I haven't really been reading anything other than the Bible, so <laughs> that's one book. So I don't have books that, um, you know, that I've read uh, that I can, you know, I can add. So one of the things that I've talked about is I love vintage books. There's two things I love about vintage books and buying vintage books is the smell, number one, which Ernie thinks is absolutely disgusting. I love it. Two, you never know what people have written in them, and I just love that. And that is one of my favorite things to do, is pick up vintage books and read what people have written from the past. So let me show you what I've got so far. Before we get to the vintage books, I do wanna say that I love design books. That's, that's something that I will pick up and read uh, all the time, I or look at, you know, all the time. It's just a favorite pa pastime for me. I was looking at Home Goods, and I loved this <laughs> book. It seemed interesting to me. Uh, it's called Red Lipstick, and all it is is an ode to a beauty icon, Rachel Felder. So it's all about lipstick. And I thought that would be really fun to browse through one day, so I picked it up. Then I found um, an Athena Calderon design book, Live Beautiful. I have not opened it yet. I will. Excited to crack that open. This one is super fun. I was excited about it. I always look at the um, hardcover. Um, this one was a beautiful blue with gold, um, but this is what drew my eye. I thought that was really cool. So another thing that's interesting to crack open and look at. And then this is Kinfolk Travels, Lower Ways to See the World. And I thought that was interesting too. But what these all have in common is this. They all work together. So if I'm going to use them stacked on top of each other or next to one another, they don't um, interfere with my uh, OCD. <laughs> they just kind of all go together. So it does take a minute to find books that you would be interested in opening that work well with each other. Now we're gonna get into the old books. Now I found this one, Lena Rivers by Mary J. Holmes. And I loved this color and the age. Look at the pages, you guys. <sighs> I love it. So it was $12 and it says in here, Edna Ham and from Mama, from Mama. And it is dated December 25th, 1903. I love that. I just love that. I just think that is so cool. I have a piece of somebody's history, and that is cool. A little girl opened this book on Christmas morning in 1903, and she was excited about it. So that just excites me. I'm actually gonna read this book. The next old book I got was Shifting for Himself. I loved the cover, that's what drew me in. And of course, how old the book is. Oh. I'm actually gonna read this book too. Another one that drew my eye was this one here. Always the binding and the pages draw me in. That's what draws me in to the age of the book or to open the book. This is so funny, it says, be quiet kid, I ain't joking. <laughs> and then it looks like it was smeared out. June Oliver owned this book. 
It looks like she balanced her money or did math work or something in there, which is really very cool. Tennessee, it's growth and progress. So a little history about Tennessee, which is very cool. Then I saw this book. Um, I just liked it because it's red, white, and blue. <laughs> But it's Rebel in Blue um, is the name of the book. But I loved the color of the hardback. It's like a powder blue, beautiful. So I most likely will take this cover off. It's tearing anyways. Um, this is the Rebel in Blue, a novel of the Southwest frontier from 1861 to 1864 by Herman Topperwein. Wayne, we were just talking about handwriting, weren't we? But I don't... It's for Ethel Glenn, and I don't know what that says. That's very cool. Final old book that I got is just this one here. Again, the binding and the pages are what draw me in. So this is what I will run towards on shelves. This is Betty Brown Tips book. It is a music book. So she studied the music. She even made notes in it all over the book actually. Look how beautiful that is. And it is teeny tiny. I mean, just to give you an idea of how teeny tiny it is. Look at that. And she made notes all over the book. Um, I don't know music, so I don't understand any of it. But her writing was, absolutely impeccable and just like the first set of books my old books all have this in common so i love that just beautiful beautiful so then i started picking up little things here and there for you know of things of interest like i said i'm not done and i don't plan on being finished before i get the library decorated because the joy of decorating is the continuation of it and the finds and you know I might be at the antique mall or I might be at the consignment store or a thrift store or home goods and I might say oh my gosh that would look so good um, so my intention is not to complete it all in one day but I do want to have a good base um, so I picked up a few decor pieces we found this beautiful onyx bowl at home goods Look at how beautiful. We loved the shape and the natural edges on it. So beautiful. And that would look beautiful on a stack of books or on the shelf with maybe art behind it, something inside. Speaking of something inside, I found this set of ceramic balls. I mean, this couldn't be more perfect, right up my alley. These were only $16.99 for a set of three. And I may put them in the Onyx Bowl, I don't know. We'll have to see what fits me, what, what, uh, we'll have to see how I feel that day when I'm decorating. I'm just excited, I'll get it all in there and just start putting it together. <laughs> With you guys, of course. And then we found these really super playful bookends. They are heavy, marble, an X. And the other is the O. Just so pretty. And they were $16.99 each. Because I have so many shelves, um, I have an idea of what I want to do on the desk side versus the bookcase side. I definitely think I want to use the cantaloupe rule on the desk side. Just because those are a little bit wider in height and depth and in width. Um, and what the cantaloupe rule is, if it is larger than a cantaloupe, you're safe to buy it. You're safer to do that as opposed to a bunch of little things to fill a shelf out, if that makes any sense. I picked this up. It's definitely larger than a cantaloupe. Love the detail. So on another day, I found this one. This is the exact same size as that one. This one was a little bit pricier. It was $50, but it's, I love the shape of this one and it's definitely bigger. <laughs> Oh, I love this one. It's gorgeous. We talked about the um, 357 rule when decorating, so the odd numbers when you're decorating a, 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 you know, like a vignette or that type of thing. It just looks better, it's easier on the eye. Um, so that is my thought process behind those, is when you walk into my um, library, 
when you come in the front door and you look to your left, you're going to see the shelves with the desk. I, I'm going to be placing those in a triangle using the triangle method. So we're using the 357 rule, triangle method, and the larger than a cantaloupe method <laughs> in design um, in those shelves. Um, so they'll either be in a triangle this way or a triangle this way, but either way, it's going to be very eye soothing to have those in there. And those are my bases. I think it's all gonna come together beautifully. We are getting very close to reveal day. Um, I'm so excited. I can't hardly wait. I really feel like within the next couple days, I'm gonna, they're gonna be done. It's all coming together. It's all gonna be beautiful and I cannot wait. So thank you so much for watching today. I hope you guys got some design inspiration, some home decor inspiration from this video. And I hope you guys can see my vision. That's really important that I get that point across. Otherwise, I'm not doing my job. <laughs> so let me know in the comments what you guys think. Thanks for staying till the end. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye.